How's it folks and welcome to the 33rd episode I think it is of my Hogwarts Legacy playthrough. We're going to continue on with the main quest. We're speaking with Headmistress Fist... Headmistress Fist... Welcome back. Headmistress Fitzgerald. <laughs> Had a bit of a tongue twister there. Hello Professor. I have news. The goblins are looking for something. Another repository. They've built drills to help with their search. Oh, most troubling. Are these repositories like the broken container I found at Rookwood Castle? They are. I fear we have no time to lose. Have a look at the map. Fortunately, the next trial is fairly nearby. It's Hogwarts. As you know, I was headmistress in my time. My portrait hangs in the headmaster's office. In fact, I witnessed Professor Black learn of your arrival. And I'll confess that I wondered about you. Wait, is the next trial in the headmaster's office? It is. I had hoped that when the time came, the occupant of that office would be of help to us. Unfortunately, this headmaster seems wildly unconcerned with anything but himself. You'll need to access the office while he's away. I understand. Very well. I'll find some way to get in. Good. I shall meet you in my portrait there. Until then. Looks like I need to sneak into the headmaster's office. How will I gain access to the headmaster's office? Perhaps Professor Fig will know what to do. Let's go find Professor Fig then. Up for a run. Actually, maybe I should just teleport there. Oh, oh. Astronomy win. Not chance. Professor fix class right there. Oh, uh, while I'm here, I should show off something that I discovered a while back, but I don't know if you guys saw it. A little east egg to um, Chamber of Secrets. Polyjuice potion in the toilets. In the girls' toilets. <laughs> nice little secret there. Eh? Professor Fig, the Keepers have shown me where the next trial is. Has something changed? Lodgok and I have learned that the goblins are searching for another repository, like the one we saw at Rookwood Castle, and I discovered that they're building massive drills to help in their search. Professor Fitzgerald seemed very concerned. I see. Ranrock clearly knows even more than we suspected. And sir, there's something else. Lodgok knew Miriam. He knew Miriam? They encountered each other at Rookwood Castle. She was doing research. That's where she found the container with the port key. He liked her so much that he let her leave with it, despite orders from Ranrock. I don't know what to say. She could win over almost anyone. I want to hear more of this. And in fact, I'd like to speak with Lodgok directly. But we've no time now. Where is the next trial? Believe it or not, it's in the headmaster's office. Incredible. Very well, you'll need the password to get past the stone gargoyle. The headmaster's house elf will know it. I don't know the headmaster's house elf. Will he even speak to me? I imagine he's loyal to the headmaster. He is. So you'll need a disguise. I have just the thing. A polyjuice potion. You'll look and sound like Professor Black. Wait, doesn't polyjuice potion require a bit of the person you want to change into? And take ages to brew? It does. So how do you already have Polyjuice Potion to change into Professor Black? One never knows when such a thing may come in handy. 
Let's just say I felt the need to be prepared for anything after my fruitless trip to the Ministry on his behalf. Now, time is of the essence. Drink up and I shall explain more. <laughs> How do you feel? Incredible. I won't forget that taste anytime soon. <clears throat> How do I sound? Convincing. I've taken the liberty of transfiguring your robes. As we discussed, you'll need the password from Scrope, who could be anywhere in the castle. You might look for Professor Kagawa. She's taken to badgering the poor elf about Quidditch in the hopes that he can convince Black to change his mind. Thus far, unsuccessfully. I see. But what if Professor Black sees me? Leave him to me. I shall tell him where to meet a liaison from the Ministry in Hogsmeade. That should give you plenty of time. Thank you, Professor. I suppose we'll meet again in the map chamber. It's rather strange to hear gratitude coming from Professor Black. <laughs> I'll see you there. Now to find the Headmaster's house elf. <laughs> I was not expecting Polyjuice. Alright. Let's go looking for... Professor, a moment of your time. Professor, I was hoping to catch you. I... Oh, I, um, places to be, Professor Sharp. Places to be. Of course, sir. Only, <clears throat> you'd asked me about a particular potion, and I, well, I... I did? I did, yes. Well, spit it out, Sharp. I don't have all day. Probably best not to discuss it here, sir. I assure you, Sharp, you may speak freely. Very well. I've brewed the cure for boils you wanted. I can drop it by your office when it's convenient. <laughs> of course, yes. No need for all the cloak and dagger. Simply have a student deliver it. A student. Very well, sir, if you insist. I do. And thank you, Sharp. I just hope you've brewed enough for all my boils. <laughs> now, to determine which student gets this rather unenviable task. He's having fun with us. Has anyone seen my ivory-handled hand mirror? Of course you haven't. Said Sebastian. Looks like it. What if I heard the headmaster approaching? Gareth! Uh, uh, Mr. Weasley! What are you doing here? Don't you have uh, somewhere to be? Oh, Professor! Yes, of course! All sorts of places I'd rather be right now. Uh, do you need something from me? I'm looking for my house elf. Surely you've seen him? Ah, the little one eared fellow. I saw him heading to the Great Hall moments ago, muttering on about your, um, sterling graces, sir. I am watching you, Mr. Weasley. Mr. Redding, who owns Honeydukes, tells me some of his billywig stings recently went missing. Prime potion ingredient. And I know you fancy yourself a skilled potioneer. What? But, sir, I haven't been anywhere near Honeydukes. I... Bah! That's enough from you. Just know that I have eyes and ears everywhere. On your way, Mr. Weasley. Hey, hey. Well, there's one for my diary. He's definitely dead in a kick, kick out of pretending to be the headmaster. Chewing with your mouth open? Where are your manners? Master, here, what could he want? Mr. Gaunt, where do you think you're going? I beg your pardon, sir, I'm simply on my way outside. Taking the day off, eh? Typical student, wasting the hours away. I... I have to write 20 inches on Dittany and its uses was heading to the greenhouse. Ah, yes! Mixed with, uh, bubo tuba pus makes a, a fine, uh, mustache paste. Yes, mustache paste. Uh, I find. <clears throat> Are you feeling all right, sir? You don't seem yourself. I assure you, I am quite healthy, Gaunt. 
If I need a medical diagnosis, I shall head to St. Mungo's. <laughs> Something is very wrong. I haven't time for any of you at the moment. None. None at all. Move aside. Professor, a word? Professor Black? Again, it is not too late to reconsider your decision regarding Quidditch. We... We could still have trials and a somewhat shortened season. It would be better than none at all. But the injury, Madam Kagawa. Professor, more than one student has taken a bludger to the head on our pitch. I dare say it knocked some sense into them. And they are fine now. The fact that it happened to be a pure blood, well, that's no reason to... What? Nonsense. That you would trivialize the health of a student over a, a silly game. A silly game? I... You are quite impossible sometimes. Sir, I have a good mind to write to the Department of Magical Games and Sports at the Ministry about you. Good idea. I can even provide the parchment should you need it. Now, where is my elf? I... parchment? Very well, I will, and with pleasure. And I spotted Scrope in the Great Hall. Seems to be avoiding me. Hmm, I wonder why. Good day, Madam Kagawa. <laughs> uh -oh. What did we do to deserve him as a head? Greetings! I mean, out of my way, children! Could you imagine going through your school day and watching the headmaster sprint in? No, it's the headmaster and he's coming this way. Miss Broom, a word. Oh, Professor, this is an uh, interesting surprise. It's Bloom, by the way. Remind me of your area of affinity, Broom. OWLs are swift approaching. Charms, sir. Non-verbal spells. Might work on one that makes me disappear. Well, keep at it, Broom. And before you know it, you'll be as invisible as that new fifth year seems to be. They're not invisible, sir. I've seen them near the library. In fact, they help me with my, uh, heavy books. <laughs> Speaking of invisible, where's my blasted house elf? Something seems a little off with the headmaster. Alright, let's find that house off now. This place really is decked out for uh, Christmas. Stand proud, purebloods. <clears throat> the future is yours. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Professor, I need to speak to you. Hello, Professor Black. Ah! Professor Weasley, how how delightful to see you. Sir? Ah, uh, since I have you here, I wonder if I might, um, speak with you about Professor Fig. Oh, very well. I've decided to give him a bit more uh, leeway with his time. Leeway, Professor? Are you sure that's wise? I confess I do worry for his students. He's rarely here as it is. I realize that, and I'd like to keep it that way. I see. But, sir, if I may, I am wary of how much time the new fifth year seems to be spending away from the castle, supposedly on Professor Fig's behalf. I've heard unsettling rumors of their escapades. Everything from sneaking into the Forbidden Forest to confronting Ranrock's loyalists and Rookwood's lot. <coughs> what? <coughs> Goodness. You cannot believe everything you hear, Professor. No, 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 you cannot. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I shall keep an eye on Fig. You simply keep doing the wonderful job that you're doing. <laughs> simply wonderful. I... well, I... Um, thank you. But I'm happy to look into... Uh, good, good. That'll be all, Weasley. I, I mean, Professor Weasley. Good day. <laughs> a wonderful job. Leeway for I shall never understand that man. Alright, almost there. That ought to give Professor Fig some breathing room. Oh, it's snowing inside the Great Hall. That was pretty cool. Wait until Master sees what a wonderful job Scope is doing. Ahem! Attention, students! 
I hereby decree that the Great Hall be forthwith decorated in the elegant banners of Ravenclaw. I shall be taking no questions at this time, or ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a piece of power and all that. Scroop! Oh, greetings, Master. Remind me of the password to my office. Oh, but Master made Scroop swear never to tell anyone, even Master himself. How dare you question me? I've a mind to give you a matching set of ears. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, of course, sir. Uh, Scrope begs forgiveness. It is the Black Family motto, Master. Hmm. Right. Of course. I, uh... Master does remember it. It's pure bloods forever, isn't it? Uh, uh, close, Master. Uh, Scrope thinks Master is indeed testing Scrope. Uh, it is always pure. <laughs> Obviously. And, of course, as Master knows, in French. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, I order you to pronounce it for me. Oh, but Master knows that Scrope's French is most pitiful. Oh, uh, very well. Toujours pur. Ha! Ah, thank you. Never speak of this conversation with me or anyone else. Of course, sir. Scrope shall try his best to keep out of Master's way. The Polyjuice potion's wearing off. I best get out of sight. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, made it just in time. It's wearing off. Fig was right. I can't believe it worked. Now to speak the password to the gargoyle. All right, let's take a gander to the headmaster's office. Wherever that may be. Is it in the quest log? So. Okay, there we go. Just update it now. The top of the sta staircase, I'm assuming? Maybe. Haven't actually been there yet. Okay, we take out yeah the staircase. Really I'm running all of the course. Of... Oh, this is the, the trophy room. <laughs> With the house of armor. Oh, it's through here. Okay, and then weird passageway. Why is the curved door like this? Bunch of statues and the gargoyle. the gargoyle. That's where I need to speak the password. Okay. Toujours pure. Revelio. 
headmaster's office gargoyle. The staircase that leads to the headmaster's office is guarded by an enchanted gargoyle that will let only those who know the password enter. Though anyone choosing to visit the current occupant of the office is... Though anyone... Though anyone choosing to visit the current occupant of the office is difficult to fill. Oh! It's joking about how no one actually wants to visit Headmaster Black. That makes more sense. I wonder if all the elite wizarding families have a motto. Revelio. <clears throat> Sleeping portraits. Not all headmasters and headmistresses enjoy the living enjoy reliving the day-to-day -day challenges of running a school of witchcraft and wizardry. Some prefer to enjoy a well-earned nap when possible. They just conk themselves out. Okay. Alohomora. That breaks into every door there is. I'm sure Professor Black won't be missing too much. Oh, what's through here? Oh, it's his bedroom. And a note. Dear Phineas, the children have been asking about your return. Belvina in particular chooses to do so each day at breakfast and is engulfed in a sulk when I remind her that you are ensuring the quality of her future education. Sirius and Phineas rarely send me an owl, although when they do, they never mention you. I'm certain they're proud of you and all that you're doing for Hogwarts. Having one's father as headmaster is a tremendous honour. Merlin help me, Cygnus is now crawling and follows Arcturus about like an unwelcome shadow. Arcturus is begging for an invisibility potion and frankly I can't blame him. I'd be tempted to brew one if it weren't for the eternal sniveling that Cygnus would regale me with. Perhaps we shall see you during the next school holiday. But please don't feel any obligation, we can manage, Ursula. <laughs> uh. Revelio. Bunch of loot. Is it over here? Definitely hearing. Can't see where it is. Maybe it's in a ne room next door or something. Alohomora. Oh, this is your balcony outside. Revelio. Alohomora. Professor Black, regarding your letter dated the 20th of September, I shall not reconsider the ambitious process at Hogwarts. Regards, Ferris Spaven, Minister for Magic, London. Revelio. Key of Admittance. Mouse window. Probably can see the Hogwarts Express pulling through at the start of the year. Okay, let's go back down. Revelio. Oh, it's over here. Oh, it's about the Fortinet. The Fortinet. This enchanted hat was created by the four founders of Hogwarts as a means by which students should be placed into one of the four schoolhouses. Skilled at legitimacy, the Sorted Hat can see into the wearer's head, allowing it to de determine their thoughts and abilities. And there's something through here. That goes that's on that side. 
Revelio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's through that wall or something. Which actually makes me want to check that um, before I do the trial while I'm up here. Check that locked door on the other side. That might lead to it. Oh, never mind. Oh, uh, there's a butterfly thing. Lumos. Or moss. Okay, it looks like it's at base of the stairs, but I can't go down there yet. Can't go too far from the headmaster's office or the shin fails. It's good to see you. All thanks to Professor Fig's quick thinking. Now what? Approach the pedestal in the antechamber and read the book that appears. What can I expect to find in the book? A story. I cannot say more. You may recognize some elements of it as I was inspired by a tale with which many wizarding children are familiar. I suspect there will be more to this than reading a book. Your suspicions are correct. We shall speak when you are finished. Has this been under the headmaster's nose all this time? That must be the pedestal. Fancy looking book. He looked a little shocked that he was getting sucked into the book. So I'm assuming we're going to take part in whatever the story Where is. am I? Professor Fitzgerald? Can you hear me? Are this? I am here. In this place, you may call me Neve. You shall be witness to a fable. Pay attention. Things are not always as they seem. This is very cool. You must move swiftly and cautiously. Use the tools you encounter to find me. I... The first you will need is a cloak. In this place as in life, death takes many forms. Avoid each of them at all costs. Is this a deadly hallow? Can I go through the house? No. So basically just sneaking past. I think this might be the tale of Beedle and the Bard. I should have run when I could. I'd be free by now. Or inspired by it. Or the, the three death behinders. This is my chance. Come and leave. I need to time this just right. I see. The staircase straight ahead. There we go. Just gotta have to wait for them to move around and then we can... Keep seeing How can this happen? Oh, it was her. I thought of the, the dead body was speaking for a bit there. Huh. Alright, let's keep going. Ladder. Perhaps they won't be able to find me if I go up there. Can't boost, there we go. Now I can boost. They 
they're gone. For now, I need to get out of here. Where could Neve be? Too many. I must cross this road as fast as I can. Yes. That's where I need to go, but I need to find a way past them. There we go. Come, move faster. There we go. There's death again. Nothing this way, more danger. Turn back. There's no getting past them that way. Closed. That doorway looks like the only safe way forward. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh. Okay, he turned the other way. A GCC coming here. Now's my chance. They got very long fingers. That's the way forward. Yeah, we get the cloak. That's pretty cool. Can this be? I think I'm invisible. Ah, uh, have to go straight. I don't think we'll be able to get them outside of this storybook scenario, though. Seems like it's a self-contained thing. All right. They can't see me at all. I can get closer to them. <laughs> Sneaky no peep. This is the way forward. Finally free. Now where are you, Neve? You have had one death thus far. But have yet to find me. Keep searching, but this time you will be unable to hide. Wield the wand you see before you. Do not squander its extraordinary power. A distic. I've never felt such power. Bombarder. Come on. That feels me cheap. Oh, it's your. Bombarder. 
Sender. Potato. Stupid. Descender. Stupid. The Pulsar. Combat. The sport keys are not where I'm used to them being. The Pulsar. Bombarda. Descender. Defender. So the the spell abilities are not where I'm used to pressing them. So I'm not gonna actually even aim for the Julian feats. I'm just gonna try and complete the battles quickly from now on. This looks like another battle arena. All right, let's move on. Is this the end? Oh, we got one more death v Hanno, I think. Wonder how we would use this. Yeah, it's got the Deathly Hallow symbol on it. You are far from finished. Pass through the mourners ahead. Nothing is what it seems. I can't believe she's dead. Oh, poor Neve. Gone so young. Let us always honor her memory. May her memory be a treasure to us forever. You found me. 
but you cannot undo what has been done. The magic of the stone can only conjure a shadow of my former self. Are we going to go see another Pensy of Memory, I But think. there is no light without shadow, as there is no shadow without light. Simply because you can eliminate darkness does not always mean that you should. Once again with Remember one of these massive statues. as you witness my memory. So we're looking at a memory in a storybook. Going a bit meta here. <laughs> Isadora, what you did for your father was remarkable. Well, wasn't it? And Percival needn't worry about the strands of emotion or the traces that this magic leaves. I found a way to contain all of it. You haven't stopped. Goblin Silver. You spoke to a goblin about this. Don't worry, he has no idea what we're containing. We don't know what effect any of this may have. The emotions, the dark traits. You sound like Percival. And as it happens, I do know. It is a source of strength, of focus. Somehow it enhances my ability to wield magic. I don't follow, Isadora. I think we can harness it. Power like this is not to be toyed with in the wrong hands. You saw what I did for my father. Oh, Niamh, imagine the good we could do. Everyone is in some kind of pain. Breathe it in. Oh, can you feel it? Oh, Isadora. This must stop. All of us. You've kept this power to yourselves for so long because you fear it. I choose to embrace it. Well there. Sounds like she's going a bit heavy handed. Revelio. That definitely sounded more like a trial than the other two, which was basically just fighting a couple of golems and some puzzles. But that actually felt like a uh, a trial from the keepers. Is it true? Has someone completed the first three trials? It is, and I have. But you are so... Young? I know. You must be Professor Bakar. I am. Pleased to meet you. The pensive memory I just witnessed... Was Isadora inhaling painful emotions? She was. I found it disturbing. But how did she gain power from it? How did she harness it? It was disturbing. Although, I wonder that you are asking about her power. I hesitate to reveal the location of my pensive to someone who, perhaps, has yet to understand the responsibility of power. I can assure you, Professor, I do. In fact, what you don't yet know is that a dangerous goblin called Ranrock has accessed the repository at Rookwood Castle. He has learned to harness the contents of it as a source of immense power. He plans to use that power against wizardkind. We have no time to waste. I see. Nonetheless, 
The knowledge you shall gain after you witness my memories is too valuable to share without further consideration. I shall require time to confer with the other Keepers. It seems we have no choice but to wait, frustrating as it is. I heard what you told Professor Bakar. Isadora was inhaling emotions to gain power? She was. And she pulled emotions, as she did from her father, from Professor Fitzgerald. Without permission. Monstrous. What's more, she said that she found a way to store the traces of magic she extracted in goblin silver. The repositories? Possibly. There's something I didn't get a chance to tell you earlier. Ranrock has been digging at locations tied to the five names he found in the journals of a goblin metal worker named Bragball. Five names? The Keepers, and who else? Isadora Morganak? Precisely. That's how he's been one step ahead of us. Gringotts, the Tower, Rookwood Castle. If the Keepers won't tell you where the next trial is yet, I say we at least maintain a watch on Ranrock. Perhaps he'll lead us to more information. Perhaps. I hope to hear from Lodgok soon. I haven't heard anything since I learned of the drills. Oh, and as you've probably guessed by now, your Polyjuice plan worked like a charm. I knew it would. I may have done too good a job distracting Black. I had no idea he can't hold his fire whiskey. <laughs> okay, looks like we completed that main quest line. And it definitely looks, but what seems like his story is going off the deep end. So, we'll probably spend a bit of time. I shouldn't have reacted so bitterly about your goblin friend. I apologize. I hope we can finish what we started with the triptych. Please meet me at the southern coast. We can search for the final canvas piece. What was that bar? Fresh Weezy. We've got an Alpo that didn't automatically play. Okay, let's go look at quest. Oh. Get in a phoenix for Deke. Uh, I think we'll do that one and the the one with Sebastian. Maybe. Sh see what other quests are in the area. Okay, so there's the Summoner's Court and History of Magic Loss. Okay, I would like to attend that. And... Phoenix Rising with Deke and having a chat with Natty. Yeah, let's go do that now. And then I'll probably end the episode after this one. And then in the next episode we'll do the, the Phoenix and Sebastian's quest. Oh, the Ravenclaw banners are gone. Okay, um, let's look for Natty. Oh, she was right in front of us. Ah, I have been meaning to speak with you. I still can't believe we escaped the Ashwinders. You may not realize it, but you are the talk of the school since you saved me that day. I wonder how everyone knows about it. I told my mother in the hope that she would be more forgiving of what I have been up to if it came from me. She likely told other professors and... <sighs> news travels quickly. Unfortunately, she might, in fact, have been even less forgiving than I'd hoped. I don't blame her for being concerned. We have been involved in some dangerous activities. As the Ashwinders were locking me up and threatening my life, it did occur to me that my mother may have been right. <laughs> has Officer Singer done anything with the evidence we provided? She has not. Halo is as strong as ever. Someone needs to stop him. Whether it is us or Officer Singer, if someone had stopped the monsters like him in Matabililand, my father would be alive today. What exactly happened to your father? 
It was a beautiful day. My mother had gone to tend to a neighbor who was ill, and so my father and I were galloping in the savannah. Galloping? Your father was also an animagus, I take it. He could become the most majestic giraffe, and he would carry me on his back, my arms around his neck. We were on our way home when we surprised a group of bandits who had come from our village. One of them saw me just as he removed a scarf from his face. He shouted and then aimed his rifle. He didn't want you to identify him. Exactly. In an instant, my father bowed his neck to protect me and was hit. As he fell, my father changed back into his human form. When the bandits saw this, they turned and ran in fear. Magic terrified them, and then he was gone. <sighs> and it was all my fault. Your fault? How so? He died protecting me. If I had been capable of protecting myself, he would still be alive today. My mother and I tried to go on without him, but it became too much for us there. A few years later, we left to come to Scotland. Do you think taking down the Ashwinders will avenge your father's death? No. Vengeance is not what drives me. My father would not want that. He, and my mother, raised me to believe that it is a privilege to be able to fight for those who cannot. I know there is risk involved, but I feel it is worth it. <laughs> I am glad you seem to think so too. What does your mother think about all of this? Well, as you saw, she worries a great deal. She is an excellent seer, but I think it bothers her to this day that she did not see my father's death coming. She misses him, as do I. So I believe on some level she understands my need to seek justice in a small way, but that does not mean that she likes it. Do you think your father would approve of the things we've been doing? Oh my, that is a good question. In theory, yes. Although he would worry, as my mother does. But I think he, of all people, would understand my persistence. My father never shied away from a fight for good, no matter how ruthless the foe. And I think he would have enjoyed knowing that I had a compatriot like you. I'm sorry, Natty. I can't imagine what you've been through. Your father sounds exceptional. He was. Truly extraordinary. And thank you for your kind words. We all have our burdens. My father had a saying about that. Yes, I remember. Rain does not fall on one roof alone. Exactly. Soon you and I will put an end to the Ashwinders, beginning with Harlow. And once he is gone, we will turn our attention to Rookwood. We are making progress, and we will succeed. Thank you again for saving me. You deserve all of the praise you have received. All right, so I guess that's how she Lost your father. Also, don't think she should blame herself. It sounded like he was just trying to protect her. Alright, uh, I think I'll end it off here. And then we'll carry on, as I said, in the next one with trying to catch a phoenix. I hope you guys all have a great day. And cheers for now.